Hello everybody, it's the Motorcycle Muse here. In this video, I'm going to be explaining in detail how the cooling system works on a modern day motorcycle. So I'm going to be focusing on air cooling, water cooling and oil cooling systems. So why does a motorcycle engine need a cooling system? Well, the reason is that the air and fuel mixture which is burning in the cylinder of the engine burns at a temperature of about 2500 degrees or up to that temperature so it's a very high temperature now the air and fuel mixture which is being burnt at that temperature creates a huge amount of heat energy now while most of that heat energy is expelled from the cylinder of the engine through the exhaust of your motorcycle out into the atmosphere, there is still actually a huge amount of that heat energy that is conducted by the cylinder walls, the cylinder head and the piston, which are all in contact with the exhaust or the burning air fuel mixture. So the second thing that we need to note is that the engine of our motorcycle runs most efficiently within a temperature range of about between 68 degrees Celsius and 105 degrees Celsius. If the engine is running at a temperature below 68 degrees Celsius then the oil is not warmed up enough and the viscosity of the oil is affected and it's not going to lubricate our engine as efficiently as it, as it should. Now if the engine is running at a temperature above 105 degrees Celsius then we run the risk again of affecting the oil. So the at a temperature of about 120 degrees Celsius, for example, the oil in the engine begins to degrade and lose its viscosity. And therefore it's not lubricating the engine as efficiently as it should, or the engine oil will not last as long as it should. We also have the possibility, if the engine runs too hot, that the, metal, the moving metal parts in the engine of the motorcycle begin to expand as they heat up. And as they expand, it can cause parts to seize. So for example, the piston in the cylinder can seize in the cylinder if it gets too hot and expands too much and it basically just gets stuck in the cylinder. So for that reason we need to make sure that our engine is running within that temperature range of about between 68 degrees Celsius and 105 degrees Celsius. Now this particular engine is not completely air cooled but I have here the cylinder from an air cooled engine. Now in an air cooled engine you'll notice that it will usually have fins on the outside of the engine. So as the air and fuel mixture is burned within the cylinder of the engine, the heat created is conducted by the walls of the cylinder or is absorbed by the walls of the cylinder and it is then conducted through the cylinder, the metal in the cylinder or in the engine to the outside. So the temperature on the outside is going to be a lot less than the temperature on the inside. So the heat will flow from an area of high temperature to an area of low temperature. So it flows from the, ins from the inside, inside the cylinder, to the outside, where the 
engine is in contact with air. So the air molecules hitting off the engine, the outside of the engine, absorb that heat energy and allow that heat energy to escape to the atmosphere. So the reason for the fins on the cylinder, or the outside of the cylinder, is to increase the area over which air can flow. So that's the first cooling system that you're going to find in any motorcycle. Even on a motorcycle where there is no fins, cooling fins on the outside of the engine, a lot of the, en a lot of the energy is still going to be conducted, or conducted through the metal on the, that makes up the engine and it is going to be absorbed away into the atmosphere by air touching off the par metal parts around the engine of the motorcycle. So the problem with air-cooled engines is that the cooling cannot really be controlled. Essentially, the air cooling is increased when the motorcycle is moving because there is an increased flow of air across the engine which is absorbing the heat energy away from the engine and keeping it within that optimal temperature range for the engine to run. But if you come to a stop, then that airflow decreases and the cooling effect of air cooling decreases. So in an air cooled engine, air cooling generally works okay as long as you're keeping the engine or keeping the motorcycle moving through a stream of air. But if you're in stop start traffic, if you stop your motorcycle, you leave it running on idle, then it's going to start increasing the heat that's, incre that's uh, created in the engine of the motorcycle is going to be created quicker than it can be absorbed away by the air. So you're going, to, you're, you're going to run into a situation where you run the risk of overheating your engine. So for that reason, most modern motorcycles have water-cooled engines. We can start off here we have the water pump which is connected to the engine of the motorcycle and it pumps the coolant and the coolant you can see here which is stored in this coolant reservoir so the water pump pumps the coolant through this, up through this pipe which feeds up into the engine of the motorcycle now inside the engine of the motorcycle there is a number of channels or veins which run around the cylinder of the engine to allow the coolant to flow around the cylinder of the engine. So that coolant flowing around the outskirts of the cylinder of the engine in those channels absorbs the heat energy produced in the cylinder of the engine and then on the other side of the, of the motorcycle we have another pipe which feeds out from the from the engine and feeds up into this radiator here so it's actually the pipe is on the other side and I'll show it to you now in a few minutes so the pipe feeds up into the top of the radiator on the other side and it allows the coolant which is being pumped by the water pump to flow up into the radiator. Now when the coolant flows up into the radiator, the radiator has a number of it's, a, it's quite an extended surface area so it has a number of channels in which the coolant can run or flow through and between each of these channels which run horizontal 
across the radiator, there is a number of metal fins. So the metal fins are there to, again, absorb the heat energy from the coolant, which is running through the channels of the radiator. And the, the fins, again, a bit like the fins that were on the engine of the motorcycle, they increase the surface air area over which air can flow and absorb the heat energy away from the radiator. So the radiator's role is to cool down the coolant, which will be at a raised temperature coming from the engine of the motorcycle. Now when the coolant cools down, it then flows out of the radiator through this pipe here at the bottom of the radiator and it flows down back to the water pump and it begins that cycle again. Now what you'll also notice on the radiator is that we have a temperature sensor. So the role of the temperature sensor is to detect the temperature of the coolant inside the radiator. So why would you need to detect the temperature of the coolant? Well, if you come to a stop, for example, or you're running your bike at idle, and you're not, the motorcycle is not moving, there's not air flowing through the radiator, then again, you're going to end up with a situation where there's more energy created, or more heat energy being created in the engine of the motorcycle, than your cooling system can dump to the atmosphere. And that, be, again, because air is not flowing through the radiator, same as the air is also not flowing across the engine of the motorcycle. So the temperature sensor will detect that the coolant is, is reaching a temperature. Usually it's anywhere between 95 degrees Celsius and up to 105 degrees Celsius. So somewhere in that temperature range, the temperature sensor will detect that temperature and it has a little thermistor or essentially it, it, it consists of a little thermistor. So what is a thermistor? A thermistor is essentially a resistor. It's a temperature dependent resistor and essentially it allows current to flow at a particular temperature and at another temperature it stops current from flowing. So what the temperature sensor does is it essentially allows current to flow in the circuit that is connected to the radiator fan. So there's a little fan which is mounted on the back of the behind the radiator just in here there is a fan that has a little cover on it and essentially if the temperature sensor detects that the temperature is above that temperature range of between 95 and 105 degrees Celsius, then it allows current flow in the circuit to turn on the fan. Now, when the fan starts running, it causes, now the fan is run off the battery, okay? And it, it when it is running, it, it blows air across the fins of the radiator and therefore it cools down the coolant in the radiator artificially when the engine is not or when the motorcycle for example is not moving. So that's the role of the temperature sensor. Now the radiator also has a high pressure cap. So this high pressure cap is there to mint, it has a couple of functions actually, but one of the first function is that it maintains a higher, a certain pressure in the cooling system. So the cooling system is full of coolant and it is a closed system. So by closed system it means that the coolant flows to the water pump from the water pump to the engine, from the engine to the radiator, 
from the radiator back to the water pump. So that's a closed system. It can't go anywhere else. Or it shouldn't be able to go anywhere else. So what the high pressure cap does is it actually maintains a high pressure in the cooling system and when water is pressurized it actually increases its boiling temperature so the problem is that water which is one of the main components in the coolant boils at a temperature of 100 degrees celsius so when it boils it turns to a gas and when it turns to a gas it expands massively and that becomes a huge problem so you do not want the coolant boiling in the engine of your motorcycle so for that reason the high pressure cap is fitted to maintain that pressure in the system and the higher pressure of the coolant stops the coolant from boiling or it increases the boiling temperature of the coolant now the coolant as you can see here is actually a green color and it's a green color because it's not actually pure water it's probably a mixture of 50 percent pure water and 50 percent ethylene glycol so the ethylene glycol combined with the water to form the coolant it may also have some rust or other inhibitors corrosion inhibitors to stop corrosion inside the engine because obviously water with metal whether it be aluminium or iron is or steel is n is never a good combination so there is going to be some corrosion inhibitors in the coolant along with the ethylene glycol and the pure water now the role of the ethylene glycol is again to increase that boiling temperature of the coolant but it also decreases the freezing temperature of the coolant so the other problem with if you use just pure water in the cooling system of your motorcycle water freezes at zero degrees celsius so in most countries around the world temperature is between zero degrees and minus 35 degrees are actually quite common and that would mean that the if it was pure water in your cooling system then it's if the temperatures go below zero degrees celsius then the coolant is going to freeze and it's going to damage your cooling system so you do not want that so the ethylene glycol combined with the water it's about a 50 50 mixture lowers the, the freezing temperature and increases the boiling temperature so you have a greater temperature range in which your the coolant in your cooling system can operate now the pressure cap it maintains that pressure which increases the boiling temperature and prevents uh, bubbling of the coolant in the engine it also has another role so the coolant the, the cooling system is full of coolant at normal you know when the engine is turned off it's at it's going to be full of coolant okay now when you turn on your engine and as it heats up it heats up the coolant that is in the cooling system now although it's not boiling it's it's still remaining as a liquid the coolant the coolant will actually expand in the cooling system and that expansion of the coolant as it heats up means that that coolant has to go somewhere so for that reason there is a little valve Here in the cap uh, and essentially that valve will allow coolant when the pressure um, goes above about 15 psi or it goes a little bit above one bar of pressure 
it allows this little valve opens and it allows the excess coolant which has come from the expansion of the coolant it can flow into this expansion tank or this coolant reservoir tank so you can see here the coolant reservoir tank it has a minimum a minimum and a maximum level so if you want to add coolant to your system you always add it in through the little cap here on the coolant reservoir so okay, it's a little bit stiff to open but you open up that cap and you add coolant in you keep it between the minimum and the maximum so you will see when you turn off your motorcycle for example that the coolant level might actually be a little bit higher than when you when you went to turn on your motorcycle and the reason for that is because the coolant has heated up and some of it has expanded into this coolant reservoir now as the temperature of the coolant cools down even whether it be when you turn off the motorcycle for example or even when the fan turns on or when you're running at normal speeds the coolant should hopefully cool down and when it cools down the coolant in the, cool the closed system contracts so that creates a vacuum pressure which sucks the coolant back from the coolant reserve tank back into the coolant system so it sucks it back in through this pipe here back into the radiator so in that way it always means makes sure that the coolant is at a particular level in the coolant system and any excess coolant is pushed out and if there is a deficit of coolant it is sucked in through this pipe here from the coolant reservoir now if the coolant reservoir if you put too much coolant in here or if it possibly heats up so much that it fills up the coolant res reserve tank then there's a little pipe here which is coming out the top of the coolant reserve tank or coolant reservoir and this pipe actually comes it's, it's fed along here you can't really see it it's hidden behind the frame of the motorcycle but it comes out here and essentially any excess coolant that even if the coolant reserve tank fills up then it will flow out through this overflow pipe so that's part of the cooling system as well so the other role of the temperature sensor as well as just operating the fan which artificially cools down or blows across the radiator the temperature sensor on a lot of motorcycles can send information for example the temperature of the coolant to the engine control module which controls how the engine is running so it can play a role in the efficiency of the engine and then the other thing it can do is it can send some information up to the dashboard for the rider to see so you could have a temperature gauge on the dash of your motorcycle where you can monitor the temperature of the engine of your motorcycle now the water pump just to look at that for a second i can't i can't really easily take it off on this particular motorcycle but the the water pump um it actually runs off the engine itself so it's attached to the engine because when the engine is running there may be some gears or there may be a drive chain connected to the rest of the engine which when it's running which is actually driving the water pump continuously so the water pump it consists of an impeller so what is an impeller I'll put up a photo here so you can take a look so as you can see the impeller is like basically it's like a the propeller that you would see on a ship or a boat so the the impeller essentially is spinning around inside and it's essentially using centrifugal force to force the to create the pressure which pumps the coolant around the system to cool the or into the engine to cool the engine 
Moving around on the other side of the motorcycle, I can take a look at where the coolant feeds out from the engine of the motorcycle, where it is pumped through this pipe that feeds out through the from the engine. So you can't really see it's hidden behind the frame of the motorcycle. But essentially it comes along here and it comes up here into the top of the radiator. So it feeds into the top of the radiator because for a hot fluid, hot fluid will always rise to the top of cold fluid. So the hot fluid or the hot coolant will come into the top of the radiator where it will settle and as it cools it will actually naturally flow downwards to the bottom of the radiator and then on the other side there is an outlet from the radiator on the bottom of the radiator. Now again it is all being pumped by the water pump which I showed you on the other side but also just to draw your attention in here where the pipe feeds out from the engine there is a little there is a little housing held on a metal housing with four with three it's held on with three bolts on this little ninja 250 this housing here is actually the thermostat housing so the thermostat plays a role um, in warming up the engine so most people will probably focus on how the cooling system plays a role in cooling the engine but the cooling system actually plays a role in warming up the engine as well so when we start our motorcycle first thing in the morning it's a cold morning for example the coolant is probably not going to be higher than 30 or 40 degrees celsius in a warm climate and if we're in a cold climate then it could be anywhere down as low as zero degrees celsius to match the atmosphere the atmospheric temperature so those temperatures are outside the ideal operating range for the temperature that the engine would like to run at which is at least about 68 degrees as I said the whole way up to 105 degrees that's the operating range that we want the temperature of our engine the oil the coolant to all be at so the term the thermostat plays a role in cutting off the flow of coolant around the uh, engine and around the cooling system when the engine is below that temperature. So in this particular model of motorcycle, the Ninja 250s, the thermostat acts as a little valve, essentially. It's a temperature dependent valve. Now, what happens is that it remains almost closed or it remains fully closed below between 63 and 65 degrees Celsius and when the temperature of the coolant which is trying to be which is being pumped to the thermostat reaches a temperature above between 63 and 65 degrees Celsius the thermostat begins to expand okay and when it expands it opens up a little valve essentially and that little valve slowly opens now it only opens at a maximum opening it only moves by about six millimeters so it's not a huge movement but when it opens it allows coolant to flow out from the engine hot coolant to flow out from the engine and up to the radiator and begin that cycle of cooling down the coolant. And just lastly, I wanted to show you um, the third component that you will find on the cooling system of some more advanced motorcycles or 
maybe let's say some more high performance motorcycles and that is the oil cooling system so what we're looking at here is the front end underneath the front end of my Honda VFR 750 and what it has in addition to the radi radiator that you see in the middle at the back behind the horn so we have the large radiator for the uh, water cooling system but we also have this radiator here the small radiator which is the oil cooler so essentially what the oil cooling system does is it it works off an oil pump which pumps oil from the sump of the engine on this particular model up through some pipes feed out from the engine up to this radiator and the oil comes in through one pipe and then it goes out through another pipe and then back to the engine of the motorcycle now as the oil passes through the oil cooler it too has a number of fins which play an important role in the cooling of the oil as it passes through the oil cooler but it's very much just the same as a, a water cool system radiator only it's a lot smaller as you can see it's actually only two layers of fins and oil passages through which it can oil can flow so it's on a much smaller scale um, but essentially it just cools down the oil which passes through it and the oil is then fed back to the engine at a cooler temperature and it just plays uh, an auxiliary role in helping to keep the engine operating at the efficient temperature now the oil pump that pumps the oil to this oil cooler um, it is located in the middle of the engine so in this case it's actually near the on this particular model it's near the sump of the engine it's actually there's actually two oil pumps two trochoid oil pumps in this particular model the first trochoid oil pump pumps the oil around the engine to lubricate the engine and to lubricate the moving parts of the engine and to keep them cool through spraying oil onto the parts but part of that oil pump there is actually a second trochoid oil pump a smaller oil pump which actually pumps the oil up to this oil cooler so there's two trochoid oil pumps in this particular model one for pumping the engine oil around the engine to keep it lubricated and then the second smaller pump to feed the oil up to this air this oil cooler so that's it there are the three components of the cooling system in a motorcycle modern day motorcycle hopefully you found this useful guys if you did then give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you later